Turn the 2695 separations module off and disconnect the power cord. If present, remove the optional column heater or column heater cooler by lifting it from its keyed ports and then disconnecting its cable from the rear of the separations module. Remove the right side panel. Next, cut and remove the tie wraps securing the needle wash lines and restrictor loop. Disconnect the column fluid line between the injector assembly and the column. Using two 5 16 inch open end wrenches, position one on the compression fitting of the sample loop and the other on the needle T. Loosen and remove the sample loop from the T. Using two 5 16 inch open end wrenches, remove the restrictor loop that's attached to the shorter of the two stainless steel tubes exiting the bottom of the injector. Disconnect the injector motor cable from the interconnect on the chassis mounted bracket. Disconnect the optical switch cable from the driver circuit board. Then untie the four reusable tie wraps to free the optical switch. Remove the green needle wash inlet line and the yellow or clear needle wash outlet line from the stainless steel connecting lines at the bottom of the injector. Loosen the two captive mounting screws that secure the injector to the chassis. Lift the injector assembly a few inches and then carefully remove it and its cable from the instrument. Carefully lay the injector on a clean surface on its side. Using two 5 16 open end wrenches, disconnect the injector needle from the needle T. Loosen and remove the four M3 screws that secure the seal pack to the base of the injector. Finally, remove the seal pack with needle and place it on a clean surface. To remove the needle, loosen the seal pack's upper and lower frit retainers. The upper frit retainer requires a 5 16 inch open end wrench. Grasp the upper end of the needle and carefully withdraw the needle from the seal pack. Lubricate the tip of the new injector needle with 100% alcohol. Next, Orient the needle port about one eighth inch to the left of the scallop located on the underside of the seal pack. Then carefully slide the seal pack onto the needle. The needle should align with the scallop when the compression screw is tightened. Place the needle compression screw and ferrule onto the upper end of the needle. Next, position the seal pack with needle so that the stainless steel needle wash lines face the channel in the back of the injector. Align the four holes in the seal pack and injector base and insert the seal pack with needle into the injector base. Reinstall the four screws that secure the seal pack to the injector base plate. Do not tighten. Continue to guide the needle and ferrule into the needle T until it seats. Then hand tighten the compression screw. Now tighten the four T10 torque screws that secure the seal pack to the injector base. Use the 5 16 inch open end wrench to tighten the needle compression screw. Finally, reinstall and tighten the upper and lower needle wash frit retainers.
To rebuild the seal pack, you will need the seal pack rebuild kit with needle, seal removal tool, and seal insertion tool. Remove the frit retainer from the lower wash body. Separate the upper seal wash body, the seal body, and the lower seal wash body. Using a 9 16 inch open end wrench, remove the frit retainer from the upper seal wash body and remove the Teflon washer. Next, using the seal removal tool, remove the needle wash filter from the upper seal wash body and the upper spacer from the upper seal wash body. Wet a new upper spacer, needle wash filter, and Teflon washer with methanol. Press the upper spacer into the upper seal wash body. Use a flat-ended object, such as the capped end of a plastic pen, to ensure the spacer is firmly seated. Insert a new needle wash filter into the upper seal wash body with a tapered end facing out. Insert a Teflon washer into the frit retainer and then screw the retainer into the upper seal wash body. Tighten using the 9 16 inch wrench. To rebuild the seal body, use the seal removal tool to remove the upper and lower seals in the seal body. If you have purchased the seal pack replacement kit, an assembled seal wash body is included, making the rebuilding of the seal body shown here unnecessary. Wet the upper replacement high pressure seal and the end of the seal insertion tool with 100% methanol. Then place the high pressure seal with the spring side facing up onto the insertion tool. Wet the seal body and insert the replacement seal into the body. Repeat the seal body rebuilding procedure to replace the remaining high pressure seal found on the other side of the seal body. Next, position the lower seal wash body with filter retainer side facing down and remove the seal wash alignment tube and seal. Wet a new wash tube seal and the lower seal wash body with methanol. Then insert the new seal and seal alignment tube into the lower seal wash body. Reassemble the lower seal wash body, the seal body, and the upper seal wash body, and secure with the four T10 Torx screws. Next, place the needle wash filter into the filter retainer. Finally, holding the lower seal wash housing upside down, screw the filter retainer into the housing, finger tight only. Place the needle compression screw and ferrule onto the upper end of the needle. Next, position the seal pack with needle so that the stainless steel needle wash lines face the channel in the back of the injector. Align the four holes in the seal pack and injector base and insert the seal pack with needle into the injector base. Reinstall the four screws that secure the seal pack to the injector base plate. Do not tighten. Continue to guide the needle and ferrule into the needle T until it seats. Then, hand tighten the compression screw. Now, tighten the four T10 torque screws that secure the seal pack to the injector base.
Use the 5 16 inch open end wrench to tighten the needle compression screw. Finally, reinstall and tighten the upper and lower needle wash frit retainers. Next, install the injector assembly by lowering it so that its tubing is not pinched between the injector base and the compartment floor. Then secure it with the two captive screws. Reconnect the green needle wash inlet line and the yellow or clear needle wash outlet line to the stainless steel connecting lines at the bottom of the injector. Reconnect the optical switch cable to the driver circuit board. The injector motor cable to the interconnect on the chassis mounted bracket. And the restrictor loop to the fitting attached to the shorter of the two stainless steel tubes exiting the injector bottom. Reconnect the sample loop to the needle T and tighten into place using two 5 16 inch open end wrenches. Reconnect the column fluidic line between the injector assembly and the column. Use tie wraps to secure the needle wash lines and the restrictor loop. Carefully route the optical switch cable to the back of the chassis and secure it with the tie wraps. Next, refit the separation module's right side panel and then secure it with the screws. If you removed a column heater or column heater cooler, reconnect the column heater cable and reattach the column heater onto the keyed ports. Finally, reconnect the power cord and then power on the separations module. After reinstalling the injector, you'll need to adjust the seal pack. To adjust the seal pack, you must first purge the sample management system at least twice using degassed 100% methanol to ensure that there is no air in the syringe. Failure to do so may cause seal geometry, missing restrictor, or compression check failed errors to appear. To perform the purge, press the menu status key to display the status screen. Then verify that direct appears in the method field. Set the pump to deliver one milliliter per minute of 100% degassed mobile phase. Next, press the direct function screen key. Select purge injector, then press enter. In the Number of Sample Loop Volumes field, enter 6, then press Enter. To check for air bubbles in the syringe, select the Compression Test checkbox to perform a compression test. Finally, press OK to start the purge cycle. When the cycle is complete, look to see that there are no air bubbles in the syringe. If air bubbles are present, repeat the purge process. Next, remove the column and create restriction by partially capping the line with a union and fitting plug. The restriction should generate at least 1,000 psi back pressure at a flow rate of less than 3 millimeters per minute. A suitable container will be necessary to collect solvent runoff. To adjust the seals, access the diagnostic screen from the 2695 main screen. In the diagnostic screen, press the Adjust Seal screen key. Press the Start Screen key to begin the test. When the test is complete, the screen will display Pass or Fail and the new and previous results. The new Adjust Seal's parameters should be within the following acceptable range. Top Seal, 30 to 80. Bottom Seal, 80 to 200. Width of Bottom to Top, 50 to 120. If the new Seal parameters are within the acceptable range, press the Accept Results key to save the configuration.